I am recording just so everybody knows. And I will put it on, there we go. All right. All right. So welcome everybody. Thanks so much for taking your time and joining me tonight. Here comes a vet, one more. Hey Joy, I didn't see you there. There you go. Yeah, welcome, welcome. Yeah, all right. So I believe I know everybody here. I think everybody's familiar with my work. I bet I'm not so sure. I think when I see you, maybe I'll know. But I will say that 2020 and this year has kind of changed in terms of what I am doing and what I look at my work as and how I am helping people. I've been talking lately about spiritual upgrades. Spiritual upgrades for the modern woman. It's like, what is that? What does that mean? So for me, it was going in deeper this year and really upgrading all of my practices, upgrading my spiritual techniques, upgrading my subtle energy work, upgrading all of that by going deeper into my own soul purpose and really kind of reconfirming all of that for me. And I talk about the modern woman, which is actually funny because today I did a podcast which will air Saturday on the modern witch and what that means. And I find that there is a very big correlation between those energies because really the modern witch is a woman that really wants to take charge of her life. And it's a woman that really does want to use ritual and ceremony to own that part of who they are. And it's no different really than the old way of looking at what does a witch mean, because that's really what witches were, right? We just got such a bad rap on what that is. So that modern day woman is somebody that has a few crystals in her drawers, that does use tarot cards to help her make decisions, that is using meditation as a way to calm down. And so for me, it's like really empowering those people to do that kind of work, to learn the spiritual techniques, and to really make them as part of your everyday life. And so that's kind of where I'm at right now, is really using that purpose and using those ideas because today is marking a big shift. Today we're marking some end of patterns as we move through these eclipses. And when we come into the winter solstice, we're really moving out a whole old era and coming into a whole new way of living and being. And this work that we're doing is really important. I also interviewed a man today, which is not usual on my podcast, who is actually has a podcast called Real Men Talk. And he's actually doing this work for men. And I thought it was really important. Because Joy, I know you had just asked me this question recently too, like, where are the men doing this work? And it was really important. And I thought, okay, I'll bring him on the show. I actually know him from New York. He's an amazing photographer now living in Nashville. But I think it's important that all of us open up to both aspects of who we are. And so that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm also the host of the podcast, The Empowered Spirit Show, right, where I explore these topics, and the author of Confessions of a Shower Tapper, The Ultimate Guide to Living Your Purpose with EFT. So I have been talking soul purpose for a long time, and I find it to be a very fascinating subject. And even talking with, last week on the podcast, with Isaac Berry, who is a modern-day shaman, soul purpose, life purpose, life purpose, soul purpose, and it often is intertwined. And so we're going to look at that a little bit tonight and talk about what does that mean and use our intuition to tap into it. All right, that's kind of what we're going to do. But what I would like to do to start out is just to connect soul to soul, spirit to spirit, and bring in that vision for you. All right, so if you can, just take a moment, close your eyes, I'm going to light a little sage, brand new sage. My son used to say, brand new mama, brand new, brand new sage. And just take a nice deep inhale and exhale. Calling in your spirit, calling in your higher self and just dropping into the heart as you feel that alignment coming in for you. And then begin to connect to the greater spirit, God, creator, universe, source, and feel that connection with your spirit and the greater spirit. And then begin to connect with all the spirit beings around you, the masters, the teachers, the archangels, calling in your spirit guides. And feel this alignment for you. And as we open up to this work, Begin to intuit your own soul purpose. Just whatever comes in. See yourself happy, 
See yourself walking your path, making those choices that are consciously choosing for the decisions in your life. The joy, the fulfillment. That guiding light. Attracting all that you need for your life. The richness. The abundance. The love. The fulfillment of your path. And just embody that energy. Feel. Hear, see, know, taste, smell, all the senses. Just let that energy radiate all around you. All for your highest good. And for all those around you as well. Knowing as you sign your light, you allow others to shine theirs as well. Take a nice deep inhale. And exhale. And feel yourself grounding. Feel the feet on the floor. Bringing your awareness back. Keeping those elevated emotions radiating all around. Coming back. Opening the eyes as you're ready. Feels good, right? Yeah. So the thing is, is that my story, and I do talk about this a little bit in my book, and even after writing my book, it became even clearer and clearer. I was always running from who I was. I was running from one thing to another. I was a dancer, and then I was an artist, and then a jewelry designer, and a photographer, and I was all these many things, and never really feeling that satisfaction because I really didn't know who I was. And then my biggest lesson came, ring the bells, from a big trauma I had in my life, divorce. I was married to a man that told me how to look, told me who to cut my hair, told me what clothes to wear, didn't want me to have feelings, didn't want me to work, didn't want me to have jobs, wanted to keep me very isolated in a very unhealthy relationship. I had just gotten these amazing contracts with Eileen Fisher stores, you guys know Eileen Fisher, great clothes, right? Brand new stores opening in New York City, and I had about six contracts for their holiday opening. Huge, huge. And then that's when my marriage fell apart. He didn't like it, like he wasn't controlling me, he saw I had interest, and then that became my biggest lesson. I didn't like the fact that I went through it. <clears throat> I had two small children, they were in preschool, preschool into kindergarten, it was really hard. But my biggest lesson came by me recognizing how much of my power I had given away how much I wasn't really following who I was. And underneath the trauma is when I really started learning more about who I was. And that's when it all began to fit together. Finding that purpose of helping others find their gifts, finding that sanctuary within them so that they can too go out and do the same. And so there was a thread that ran through my life, whether it was on stage doing a message, whether it was photography, searching for light, whether it was jewelry, making people feel better. It all fit together now into what I call the healing arts. But there was a lot of things that began to weave together. So underneath our traumas, we really can learn more and more about who we are. So lots of people do think that sole purpose, we have to go out and find. How many think that? You have to go out and find it. Right? A few of you? The truth is, 
Soul purpose is the being of who we are. Life purpose can be more about the, the vocation that you do, the job that you do. Many times life purpose has to deal with lessons that you come in to help resolve. One of my life lessons is resolving the fact that I love having time to myself, but that I can also be in a relationship. All right, that's a life lesson versus my sole purpose is guiding people to understand who they are with their own gifts that they have. So my life purpose and soul purpose do intertwine and many times they can be different altogether. So right now for me, my soul purpose is one and the same as my job, my work, but it doesn't always have to be. A taxi cab driver can be a healer, right? He can listen, he can help, he can offer. He doesn't necessarily have to go out and be a healer, but that can still be part of what his sole purpose is as he transports people around New York City or wherever. So really, as we begin to understand more about the challenges we come in with, the soul journey that we travel, we can begin to unlock these gifts and understand more about what we're doing. One of the things I learned early on when I was working in the jewelry industry in New York, I thought I was just started doing this work. I thought I had to go out and change my whole life. But the truth was when I was at the factory, I was actually doing part of my sole purpose because I was watching over people and I was making sure that the factory itself had health conditions that were good for everybody around us. So having that presence and just showing up and helping other people was part of my sole purpose. And so what it did is it helped me to calm down. It helped me to understand that no matter where I do my work, I can bring this forward. So that is the same thing for you guys. It's like where in your own life can you be who you are and bring that soul purpose forward? So what I'd like to do is go into first and foremost, opening up to intuition. All right, several of you have studied with me and you probably do know what your gifts are. But instead of going into the mind, I want to go into our intuitive abilities. So that's working on the other side of the brain. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do is to go in and, and access what are those gifts within your own self. All right. So what I want you to do is close your eyes again. Take a deep breath, reconnecting with your spirit. And I want you to ask for a message. And then I want you to get really quiet inside. And notice how that message comes in for you. Can you visualize the message? Can you hear it or see it? And you can even ask, okay, what is my sole purpose? Take a deep breath, breathing up the body and exhale, breathing all the way back down. Notice what comes in. Don't try too hard. Just be in the energy. Take a deep breath. Show me more, you can ask. Notice what you notice. And then as you're ready, start to bring the awareness back.
So what did you notice? You can put it in the chat or if you'd like to ask a question or talk, feel free. It's just us. Were you able to see, hear, understand? Lisa? I didn't, I didn't notice anything. I wanted to, and I think I was trying too hard, but all at the end, whenever you said, come back, I had that old feeling like, no, no I don't want to go back. <laughs> I want to stay here and listen. So uh, I wanted to listen longer but it wasn't, it didn't come to me right then. Okay. But I, I am eager to know more about the difference in the soul purpose and the, the life purpose. I liked the way you told that, you know, that right. kind of helps to, working to know what to, to understand it better. Yes. yes. All right. Mercedes got a thumb up for that. Yeah, so first and foremost, working with intuition, the more we practice it in this simple format and getting out of the mind, because what you were describing was being in the mind. And so yeah, I realized that sometimes it takes longer for people to get out of the mind, but that's key right there. Right there is key. So knowing how to switch that, use the breath and look for those other signs that doesn't engage the mental <laughs> is going to help you know that. So Yvette says she saw a light colored figure surrounding by green and gold. All right, so Yvette, that's activating your intuition. That's what I mean, that clairvoyance, that's where you're gonna to start to see. So there has something to do with color and bringing that in. And so that's where we start to realize what our intuitive gifts are. Because that's really where the clue is. That's that six chakra energy where we go inside of ourselves and soul purpose is about being. So as you recognize the being of your intuitive gifts, that's what's going to help you see. It doesn't always make sense at first, all right? I say this often, it doesn't always make sense, right? But it will help you then to get the clues that you need. And then we write these things down, and then that's where we look through those threads coming in. Debbie says she's in the midst of trying to determine what's next for her soul and life purpose right now, right? As we go through, but as we go through tonight, you may find that there are threads that are coming through, which is what I do see for you, for sure. Um, Terry, interesting too that that you guys with us are y'all are we're seeing color, and now that you've said that, I remember I did see color. I was just too over focused on trying to hear or see a message. So I didn't even realize the color that I'd seen until I y'all said it. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. So if I had relaxed more and just opened my mind more, I think I would have heard more. So that's a real good, that helped me a lot. Definitely. And that's why the practice is really important so that we get out of the mind, right? Allie says she did feel energy, right? So we feel it. And then that can help us really get into that being state, which is where we're going to get those clues. When we try to come at this logically, all we do sometimes I think is just get more confused. We're overthinking. We want to know, we want to know, we want to start searching for it. When the essence really of your soul is right there. Lots of times I look at um, soul purpose and life purpose, kind of like how we look at spirit and soul. So I feel and what my understanding is, is that our soul is the part of us that travels lifetime to lifetime. The part of us that does get some of that wounds, that does get some of those lessons that we have to learn. Our spirit is that true essence of who we are. It's that deep part of us, that unconditional part. So when we look at the soul purpose, lots of times we will see that that soul purpose is found through the lessons that we've learned from lifetime to lifetime. In many cases, and in a lot of cases, it still carries that soul energy. In many lifetimes, in the work I've done through my own work with the Akashic Records, I've been a healer in many different lives. Sometimes it was with plants. I've even had the witch burned at the stake in there. I've had readings for that. I've had so many other readings of being in the medical field. But there was always that energy to serve, to help others. And through me, it's more of service. So even though I did make jewelry at a time in my life, part of my jewelry still had that healing capacity. 
but somebody else may come in and service products. Like products is the way in which they help people. But this whole idea of how they serve is still coming through. So I could have stayed with making jewelry, but I kind of gave it up sooner enough. I don't know, but this became the part of me that just kept following and being the right part and felt like it brought all of the parts of me together, right? And so this is what we want to start to recognize and looking underneath those traumas. Like I was talking about with the trauma of the divorce for me, what really came through for me was me not owning who I was and not recognizing my own gifts and really kind of searching out there. And as I began to search within, because that's what divorce did for me, I found my first spiritual teacher. As I found that, it really recognized, wait a minute, all my gifts are inside of me. And so again, it really didn't matter whether I was making jewelry or whether I was teaching classes, the thing was that my gift is to help others. My purpose is to come into this lifetime to help others understand within them is that sanctuary, right? If I, I mean, I've done a lot of work with that and recently been doing a little bit of palm reading, which shows us our soul purpose and life purpose. Soul purpose is the hand we're born with. Life purpose is that distinction between, uh-oh, we're not doing it. And so things start to go a little funny, right? So part of, like I was saying before, in my life purpose, and a lot of this happened through the divorce and through traumas in our life. But for me, it's like, okay, my lifeline and my headline kind of split. So I know I'm a person that needs my own personal time. Yet I'm in a relationship. So part of my lesson is finding that balance. Whereas my sole purpose is a little different. It's still coming through in terms of helping people. So when we start to look underneath, and let's go into this next exercise and see if this helps. Um, KB said she saw myself tending a garden, welcoming a visit in a beautiful small home filled with peaceful, creative energy, pouring tea, offering nourishment, sitting in communion and discussion. Yes, yeah, so part of that, I love that because part of that KB is that you are a crafter. You are something that also uses one's hands in order to what? Help people feel better which is exactly what you just described there. So that sole purpose, again, when you feel the most comfortable, when you feel that energy within you, that's part of being that sole purpose. And then how you execute it in your life can be the same or it can be different, right? So Allie, for instance, for you, like you're helping people in the, in the insurance right now, right? But it is a helping, it is a serving. Do you see where that thread can be the same? And so maybe for now, that can help you feel fulfilled, but maybe there is something in the vocation that you want to switch. It doesn't mean you throw everything away, but you continue to carry the ability to help and serve others through being in that part. And then we do what we call course correct. I've done a lot of course correcting in my life, right? But that doesn't mean we throw everything out. And lots of times that's what I see with people they want to do. They want to start over. They want to not do it. They want to throw everything away, but we don't have to do that. We just kind of course correct and shift a little bit, right? And that's kind of like what happened with my jewelry. Like I don't make it as much as I used to. In New York, I had a, I had a rep. I was at the factory. I was putting my jewelry out there. I spent a lot of time doing that. And that was a lot. It was great. It saved my life in many cases. But then I started to course correct and switch a little bit of how I was doing it and kind of put the jewelry down for a little bit. However, my hands need that, <laughs> it really does. And so now I do it more, not as much, let's just say that, but it's not something I've forgotten about. So let's try this next exercise. And this one is a little hard. And what I don't want you to do is go into the mental part of it, all right? I want you to go into more, again, using that intuitive, if you're seeing or hearing or feeling, and I'll actually add a little bit of extra breath for you, Lisa, for everybody, but um, I think that will help. And look and feel and see like underneath the traumas that you've been through. Now, trauma is a big word, right? For me, trauma was a huge divorce. It can be an illness. It can be a job loss. It can be a love loss. It can be any of those kind of things, right? But underneath it are those lessons. And so if you look at two or three or 10, however many, you're going to find that common thread. That's what we want to look for. And that is going to be in the energy of feeling or seeing or hearing or knowing, not in that mental part. Does that make sense? All right. So let's do that again. Closing the eyes. I just find closing the eyes keeps the distractions away. Taking a nice deep inhale. And just breathing all the way up the body. 
and exhale, sending that breath all the way down deep into the earth. Inhaling, expanding through the belly and the side ribs and the chest. And as you exhale, pull the belly in, pull the navel in, release the breath all the way down. Inhaling and exhaling. Calling into your spirit. And begin to find one of the traumas of how it made you feel, what you can see about it, what you know about it, and underneath, underneath, that's where you want to look for what was that lesson? And you may want to jot a piece of paper, you know, jot it down. Without getting too much in the brain, just make a few notes. And then move to another one. Something else that happened in your life, early in childhood maybe, maybe out of college, that created a shift, created a change. What do you see? Maybe you didn't get the part you wanted. Maybe you broke up with someone. What was underneath that? Make a note. How did you feel? Go to another situation, issue, time. Notice what you notice, the feelings, the lessons, the healing. Make another note. What is the growth? What are those feelings? What was the message? Continue to breathe and ask your spirit for this guidance. Show me. Take a deep breath. Then just start to bring the awareness back. Make a note.
And now, now we can use a little bit of the mental plane, the mind, and just see if there is some thread that starts to come out at you, that starts to be obvious, that starts to build a little story. Are you running from everything? Is there a common lesson? Is there a not trusting? I know a lot for me was not trusting. Not trusting I was good enough, my work was good enough, not trusting, not trusting, not trusting. So it kept me from being able to understand. But when we work with the spirit, when we work with our soul energy, both, that's where that trust comes in. That's where that confidence of knowing what we know, of noticing what we know can help us. How was that? It's kind of interesting, right? So often we want to run from the trauma or stuff down the trauma, but really that's what helps us to shift our life. And that what, that's what can help you to understand more about where you are and why you do what you do. Lisa, was it easier to go into the meditation a little bit? Because part of this is sitting quietly. Part of this is trusting that part. Um, yes, it was much easier and things just came flowing. I've got so many things, you know, great for me <laughs> to, uh, that I put together you know, from soul to life, like that were threads, I think. Good. So really good. That was really good. Yeah. What are you doing there, Allie? So then the next part of this equation is going back in and looking at what is it that comes easy to you? All too often I see my clients brushing it aside. Oh, this is too easy, it must not be my work. It's gotta be hard. Heaviness in chest and throat. That's why this work is really important at this time. Really establishing a practice. I know today it's like the same thing. I woke up, I was heavy. I have some few things going on in my own family, right? And it was like heavy, heavy. And so I did a little practice. And I had a podcast interview. I had to make myself stop and go back to my practice again because that's the heaviness I felt until I actually could clear it. But too often we're searching from the outside. Let me go do this. Let me go out there. Let me not deal with it. Let me put it down. And then we don't clear it. And then we have all, so much building up. All right. So now what we want to do is just, again, we're going to go back into meditation. We're going to use our intuition again. Again, try to get out of the mental plane into the seeing, hearing, feeling, and knowing. These are the clairs. Of course, knowing your clairs is really important. Knowing how you process your energy is really important. All the things I teach. And now I want you to close your eyes again. And just start to bring up the things in your life that are just really come naturally to you. Maybe it's being friendly. Maybe it is being of service. Maybe it is out in your garden, treating the earth well. What makes you happy? What makes you happy? Notice the colors that come in for that. Notice the hearing, notice the messages. Take a breath. And ask, what brings me joy? What lights me up? Not what you're supposed to do, not what people tell you. What lights you up? Take a breath. 
Ask to be seen more, feel more, hear more. Notice what you notice. Return to that vision that you started with in the beginning. Go back into that energy and see what comes forward through your intuition. Drop into the heart. If you find yourself in the mind, bring the re presence, bring the awareness to the heart. Embody those elevated emotions. Where are you feeling the joy? Where are you feeling the love? Where are you feeling the service in your life? Take some notes. Did you notice the energy? And just start to bring the awareness back. So soul purpose is to be more of that happiness and that joy. And then life purpose is more of the doing. And now using the intuition is when you start to weave that together and find those common threads. Terry, could you repeat that? You said the life is purpose is more of doing. What soul, is the soul? Soul purpose is more of being, being in that happiness, being in that serving humanity, being in that energy, being in that, even that intuitive state. Whereas the life purpose is more of the doing. And so they will interchange. And sometimes your life purpose will be right there with your soul purpose. And sometimes your soul purpose will be different. Like when I was talking about in New York, my soul purpose was to help people, but I was working in a factory. And so I thought, oh, I got to go do something else. I didn't. And when I realized, wait a minute, I'm being of service right now. I am helping. It helped me calm down. Because yeah, I had two children. I was a single mother. I had to make an income but it helped me really show up every day present in who I was. But up until that point, I kept thinking, I gotta quit my job, I gotta do something else, I'm not. But meanwhile, I was in a creative field, but I felt like I had to do more. But when I found out, wait a minute, if I show up present and shine my light, I am in my sole purpose. And then it naturally led me to where I needed to be. It naturally led me to where I didn't have to be at the factory full time. It naturally led me to where I could work from my home. It naturally led me to, I could then start a side business. It naturally led me to helping other people. And then eventually I moved to Birmingham and led me to my full-time purpose. 
But if I would have been angst about it the whole time and not recognizing I am in my sole purpose, I probably would have gotten another job and it would not have led me, who knows, right? Did you see my point? Does that make sense, Lisa? What do you think? What do you think, Allie? I think, um, yeah, I think just getting, I mean, I just have to get out of my head. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's the battle. Yeah. And right now with the way the world is, everybody's in their head. Everybody's in fear. Mm -hmm. Right now it's fear of the vaccine. But when we really tune in and trust our intuition and also to trust what makes us happy. To me, that's the biggest struggle. I see it all the time. I see it with a lot of my clients I work with. They're doing a job their parents told they do. They're a line of lawyers. They're a line of, and they're not happy. But that's mm -hmm. what's supposed to do. And that's like our ancestral energy, right? Like we're supposed to do this. If you don't, you're not going to make it. So we're cursed, so to speak. Again, this mm -hmm. is all my podcast for this week, so it's on my mind. But, but that's what it is. And so what happens then is we think we're supposed to do something. We think that's the path we're supposed to take. And then we're fighting uphill because we're in our mental plane and we have expectations. Whereas when we have that intuition to like, wait, this is what makes me feel good. This is the part of me that raises my vibration. We will make the money we want to make or make the money we need to make in order to survive. But most of us don't trust that. And so we get all this fear and we do things that we don't necessarily want to do because we're supposed to do it. So when we do this work, whether, you know, running our energy and all of this stuff, I mean, this is how we start to make those shifts and changes and also to recognize. I mean, Joy, I don't mean to share beyond sharing, but I think Joy's realized she's been doing some work in our group and realizing that, wait a minute, my purpose has been here all along. How does that feel, Joy? Yeah, so, um, and, and as many times as, as Terry can say that and, and clarify the difference between life, soul, and life purpose and soul purpose, you know, I had an aha moment around that fairly recently. Um, and it was just that. I was asking myself the wrong question. Um, and uh, instead of asking, what am I supposed to be doing? Because I, I believe that I am doing what I was called to, to do in my profession and in my um, uh, community service and in my work. But, um, you know, the, the question that I should have been asking myself is, um, is a being, uh, the being, and I can't, I can't describe it um, to this, to this group, but it was, um, uh, it's, it's not, it's not a, what do I do question? It's a, who am I question? And I know Terry's, you know, said that tonight, but, um, you know, I had that, I had that aha moment that I can't put into, to words. Um, and I agree, Joy, sometimes we can't put it into words because it's like a feeling. It's like a knowing inside ourselves. This is it. And then it helps us to feel that depth of our spirit, that depth of our work that we are here to do. And then we can feel more fulfilled and loving in what we do. And then we show up so much more present in how we are handling all those other challenges that come our way. And I'm not saying we won't have challenges. I'm not saying I didn't have any challenges this, this year. I had plenty of challenges. But every time I returned to my spirit, every time I returned to my practice, something else came along. And this year, yeah, I've worked with a shaman. I'm working with an advanced energy, subtle energy that I'm like over the moon about all the techniques I'm learning. And then just even helping more people by me learning more, helping more learn, knowing them in my purpose. And it's been a rough year for everybody, right? But I keep going and I keep showing up and then I have my downs, but then that lifts me back up, knowing I am doing my sole purpose right now. And by knowing that, the other part of this whole, not to get too personal, but this new relationship I'm in, it has been a challenge, but part of what I'm here to do is to learn to balance that energy of sharing my life personally with somebody else. Part of the relationship I was in pushed me from like, I'll never get close again, 
guess what? It shows up in your hands. It shows up in the prints there, which shows me like, okay, part of my purpose, my life purpose is to rectify that situation, which in turn is going to help me help others to understand that, to understand relationships, to understand the closeness that they can have. But my sole purpose didn't change. And even my sole purpose between dancing and photography and jewelry and all, none of it really changed. I just didn't know it. I didn't trust it, which is a big part of the work that I do when I help with you guys. I teach you how to trust those instincts, how you can trust the work that you're doing will lead you down the path that you need to go. So I admit it is a big topic. <laughs> And I spent, I think, an hour on the podcast last week talking to the shaman that I've been working with about it. And sometimes he wasn't the clearest about, well, is that life purpose or soul purpose? Because it does mingle. It does coincide. But the one thing that does come through is where's the joy in your own spirit? Where is the happiness that carries through for what you're doing? And underneath those traumas, underneath those lessons, that's where you're going to learn that. That's where your life can shift when you learn to trust the messages and trust your intuition. So when you look at the lessons that came forward, when you look at the happiness of where you are, when you are in that happiness and the joy, that's where you're going to find your answers. And when you can go into that, that visualization, that intuition, that's where you are going to be guided. But when we stay up here in the mind, that's where we're going to stay in the struggles. Does that make sense? Does that help? Allie, I'm not so sure you believe that. <laughs> it's like, oh, I don't know. No, definitely. It's just, it's easier said than done. Easier said than done. The going into the spirit, going into the practice being consistent in the practice. Cause I really think that's part of it too. It's really being consistent. And just the consistency of it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's what I see too, is like putting that priority, like this is important, right? This is important, yeah. right? And it's so easy today to have all of those outside things. Oh, let me just go get a drink. Let me have my five glasses of wine at night. Let me go smoke a joint or whatever, edibles, whatever. And it's easier to do that in many cases. But guess what? We wake up the next day and we're still where we were, yeah. right? So for this year, and I know I'm not the only one, but I know for this year, it has been looking underneath the surface. Where are you unhappy? Where are you happy? Because really it's that where are you happy that's going to lead you. Again, if we looked on that scale of, con of consciousness, the joy and the peace and the happiness is way up here. That's what's going to attract things into your life. The fear and the struggle and the lack are going to keep you in the fear and the struggle and the lack. And they're going to keep you searching and not being too abundant in your life and living paycheck to paycheck. That's kind of how I see it. But I do find when we can find the things that are making us happy, especially as we move into this new era that we're coming into, winter solstice, we're going to see it aligning. We're going to see this old energy shifting. We're moving more into the Aquarian age, truly moving into that. And I'm not saying that once we come into winter this year, it's going to be all peace, love, and I wish, peace, love, and bliss and everything. We still have work to do. But this is the work. I don't even know if that's the right term. This is the way going into yourself, being more intuitive, finding these practices that will bring you into those elevated emotions. Does, does that make sense when I say elevated emotions? I sometimes take it for granted. And that's part of me, like I learn all this, I take it so easy, so sometimes I think, wait, it's so easy, everybody gets it. And that's another way to understand what your purpose is, when you think everybody gets it the same way you do, because I thought everybody felt like I did, or practiced, or understood. And that's another clue. Because life, I believe, when we're in our purpose, will flow. It will guide you to where you need to go. But definitely, yes, Mercedes, being consistent, making it a priority, knowing where your intuition is, and learning how to trust it, definitely. So you, you guys, you all know this is what I do. This is what I teach. I do private mentoring, and I do group work. Right. So if you would like to learn more, if you would like to talk about how to work with me, I am offering 
a call, set up a call with me. I'll put a link in and we can talk about it. I do have a couple of spots left for the program that I work. And it is all of this. It is all of this work that I'm doing that we worked with tonight. But when you work one-on-one -on -one with me, we get really get into that kind of work. I also do group work. We're finishing up the fall season of the Empowered Spirit of the um, Intuitive Path. That's more group work, right? And we will be doing a winter. Winter, I'm not really going to be teaching anything new, but we're going to be connecting with our practice. I am kind of saying, like, at least if you have Reiki one, right? But we're going to be using our intuition. We're going to be doing our visions and our dreams. And we will work with ancestral energy. We're definitely going to do that. I'll be working with some of the tools I've been learning on how to really take away some of that ancestral energy, clear it up, and shift shift your own dynamics for your own generational energy. That's what winter is about. That's what winter is. We look to our ancestors, we look to those that have passed on, we go deep into our spirit. So I'll have that announcement coming out next week. But if you wanna do some one-on-one, one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one is where we really get into what exactly is your intuitive gift? Where can you enhance this using the tools? Working with this, if you're not Reiki trained, I train you for Reiki. And then the Akashic Records, which really gets into going into those soul purposes, really getting into your past, past lives, and seeing what has been blocking and imprints that come forward, which to me is quite fascinating. It really is, just very fascinating. Yeah. So I am offering, I put the link there. If you'd like to have a chat, you can sign up. We can talk about it and see which one is for you if you're ready to do some work. And this is how we do it. We really do. It becomes a priority and we spend the time together for sure. So I do hope this has been helpful. One is knowing your intuition and trusting, trusting those messages that come in. Two is putting it into priority. But the other one is too, looking underneath and finding the lessons that have shifted your course, right? And then the third one is what does make you happy? What is it that makes you happy and fulfilled? Because that's a trust too. That is just as important. Because I know we've been conditioned out of it. No, we have to do this. No, we're supposed to go down this path. And it may seem like the path, but then we have the struggles and we're not getting to where we want to be. Definitely. Divine feminine is rising. We don't have to push. We have to be. And that's part of it too, for sure. Questions? Anybody have anything they want to ask? Anybody have anything they want to share? Anybody uncover? A little bit more insight? I definitely uncovered more insight and I can't wait till I see you on Wednesday for my session to dig deeper. And, uh, and I also can't wait to do your um, winter. That good. sounded so good for winter, especially, yeah. you know, when you're inside a lot and need to use that time to explore more. So thank you so much. And oh, thank you. I also want to say the comments that I heard tonight too, that I read and heard really helped me focus more too. Like I wrote down the consistency and practice is what helps us open the mind, have clarity. And for me, I'm so scatterbrained. And someone wrote, they have the heaviness in the chest and I have that a lot. And being cons consistent in the practice helps clear all that. So thank you all for your comments. And Terry, thank you so much for yeah, doing this. Absolutely. Thanks for coming. I appreciate that. And yes, I will. I'll see you Wednesday for sure. And we can talk a little bit more about that. Yeah. Yeah, KV, thank you. I know you're in Australia, so the time difference too. So I appreciate that. Yep, for sure. Yeah, definitely. All right. So let's just close by taking a moment. Returning to that vision of seeing yourself in your purpose, happy and fulfilled. It's easier than you think it is. This work is easier than you think it is too. The hard part is the discipline. Just to show up, that's the hard part. Taking a nice deep inhale and exhale. Being that it is the new moon, set the intention to be in this happiness and this fulfillment state of your purpose for your life. Inhaling, 
and exhaling and just sending it out through the auric field, letting it radiate out all around. Taking one more deep breath. Exhaling. Coming back. All right. So the link is there, take advantage. Let's get on the phone and chat a little bit and see how this can help you. Thanks again, everybody. Happy new moon to your spirit. Good night. Good night. I'll hang out a minute if anybody has any questions. Questions, Ali, Mercedes? No, I'm trying to schedule a thing. Okay. So yeah. That's what Grab I'm doing. Link. Yeah, let me know if there's, I, I'm kind of busy the rest of the week, but let me know, I can find time for you for sure. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you too. All right, Mercedes, thank you, dear. I think you may be um, at work as well. All right, love you guys. Love you, Terry. Thank you.